Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, amma ba'd, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to Nasir Sessions. This is a show in which I do my best to respond to your emails via video where you email me in for problems that you might have. Now, I'm not responding to any one particular email in this video. However, what I'm going to be doing, inshallah ta'ala, is be, I'm going to be responding to several emails because this is a topic that I've received you know, questions about a lot, which is that you find sisters who want to get married, but they find that their guardian, their wali, is not actually allowing them to get married. It's not actually allowing them to get married. Uh, so inshallah ta'ala, I thought that what I'd do is I'll mention an incident from the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and an ayah from the Quran that kind of basically gives instruction on how to deal with this situation. I would request my sisters or brothers, those of you who are watching, uh, to please share this video with your parents so they can pay attention. Pay attention. At the beginning, I said this is for sisters whose parents are stopping them from getting married. Why didn't I say for brothers and sisters whose parents are stopping them from getting married? Because we find a lot of brothers, their mum and their dads are stopping them from getting married as well. Because the brother, the man, he does not have to have a wedding. He doesn't have to have a guardian that marries him off. The, the sister does. So in essence, the sister, it's, it's an issue for her if her father is saying, no, you can't get married. But for the brother, at the end of the day, he doesn't have to, to uh, um, you know, he doesn't have to, uh, he doesn't have this obligation of going to his guardian and, he, and having a guardian that, that marries him off. He's independent in that regard. But nonetheless, he should still consult his father and his mother and take advice from them and take into consideration what they say, for they have their, his best interests at heart and they are more experienced than him. So anyways, with that said, you know, you could still play this to your mum and your dad because even if they are still stopping you, even though technically, legally, Islamically, you don't have a guardian that has to s s marry you off, You're, you are not in the same situation as the, as the woman here, but nonetheless, the advice will still benefit uh, auntie and uncle, inshallah ta'ala, after listening. So please play this video to them from this point onwards. So I want to take you to an incident that happened at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a companion called Ma'qr ibn Yassar radiyallahu anhu. Ma'qr ibn Yassar radiyallahu anhu had a sister and he was the guardian, he was the wali of his sister. Meaning he is the one who had the right to marry her off. Now we know that generally speaking the default position is that the father is the wali of the girl. Why was the father not the wali of the sister? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I do not know the answer to that question. But there could be a number of reasons. Maybe the father wasn't a Muslim because a, Muslim, a non Muslim dad cannot be a wali. Maybe, maybe the father had passed away, was dead. And you know, for whatever reason, the brother is in charge. So this doesn't mean the sisters can just take their dad out of this equation and say, oh, my brother, you're going to be my wali. Because Ma'qal was the wali of his sister. No, no, no. It's your father. And it only moves from him uh, as a result of Islamic legal proceedings. If your father happens to you know, not be Muslim or not be around or whatever have you, you'll have to go to an Islamic judge to, to do that for you. But that's not the topic of discussion that we're in today. So he was the, the wali of his sister. Now his sister, he was stopping her from getting remarried. He was stopping her from getting remarried. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent now the following verse, talking to him and by extension every other dad or guardian who's stopping the woman that he is a guardian over from getting married. So I'm going to go to the part of the ayah that's directly relevant to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ Allah said, فَلَا تَعْضُلُوهُنَّ Do not stop them from getting married. Do not prevent them from getting married. Why are you preventing them? أَنْ يَنْكِحْنَ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ Don't stop them from getting married to their spouses. إِذَا تَرَضُونَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Don't stop them from getting married to their spouses if if they have come to a mutual agreement, there is, there, is, there, is, there is a mutual basis for them to agree upon something good's gonna come out of this. They both wanna get married and they're both good for each other. They, 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 you know, they, don't, don't prevent them. Don't stop them from getting married. Now, of course, there are circumstances in which a father can prevent his daughter from getting married uh, to a guy if he's a criminal. And remember, the criminal here is of types. There's the criminal who's a criminal to, yeah, in terms of the sharia. He's doing shirk. He's part of a deviant sect. He's not upon the sunnah of the Prophet He doesn't pray his five daily prayers. He shaves his, uh, his beard and he doesn't fast and whatever have you. He drinks alcohol. He, 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 he does all these things. This person is the, is, is, is the worst to marry your daughter off to. He's more dangerous than the one who's a criminal in the streets. 
uh, you know, selling drugs. And even him, you, is, he, he's evil. And you should not marry your daughter to him. But the one who doesn't pray, wallahi, he's worse. Wallahi, he's worse. And then, of course, you have the one who's a criminal on the street. And he's a criminal, you know, outside. These people, you a father who's got a valid, he's got a valid base to say, don't marry this person. He's a pawn, bid'ah, he's a pawn, shirk, he's a this, that, he's the khwan, he's from Hezbi, no, you cannot marry this man. The father's got valid basis. But if he doesn't, and you know, the, the brother is upon the sunnah, he's trying to come with good religion, you know, okay, he might not be the richest guy in the world, but that's not a valid basis for you to prevent your daughter from marrying him. The point is that there's, they, 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 they have a mutual uh, kind of understanding that when it comes to, and now you want to stop them? No, you're not allowed to stop them. Pay attention, another lesson I want to take from here. Notice how I keep saying uncle, 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 not auntie. I'm talking to my uncles right now because the ayah doesn't talk to the women. Auntie, you are the mother of this daughter. Alhamdulillah, and no one's taking that away from you. But you do not have the obligation in the sharia to prevent your daughter from getting married. You're not the guardian, aslan. The default position is that it, it, it is the man, and that's the only way it is. It's the man who is your, the, the, the guardian. So it's even more uh, you know, sad when aunties are preventing their daughters from getting, from getting married for basis reasons, when they don't even have the right to stop them. It's the father, it's the God. That's where the whole discussion is there. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the men. Allah said, فَلَا He's speaking to the men in the masculine form. Do not prevent them from getting married. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is not speaking in, 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 in the feminine form. He's not addressing the women here. Now pay attention. Some of you might still be like, nah, you know, I'm not gonna really going to listen to this. No, I'm going to still do it my way. I'm going to prevent my daughter from getting married or whatever have you. Pay attention to the next verse, please. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ يُعَذُ بِهِ مَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Allah said, this is an instruction. This is an admonishment. To who? Those who believe in Allah and the last day. Meaning, if you are a believer, then prove it. Don't stop them. And if you do stop them, it's a sign that your iman is deficient. Or perhaps your iman is not even there. Your iman is weighed and judged in accordance to you fulfilling this command and the other commands of Allah. But here this is such a serious issue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is specifying it. If you really believe in Allah, then prove it. Don't stop them from getting married. But if you don't believe in Allah and you don't believe in the day of judgment, then don't then 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 then, then stop them from getting married. Then oppress them. Then 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 do that. If you don't believe in Allah. If you if you're ready to accept that you don't believe in Allah in the, in the last day, when your iman is deficient in believing in Allah in the last and the last day. Then you know what? Stop them. But if you're, if you're going to stand in front of me and watch this video, uh, respectfully speaking, I say this to you. If you're going to sit here and you're watching the video and you're actually nodding your head, I do believe in Allah. As I ask, do you believe in Allah? Yeah, you're nodding, right? Do you believe in the last day? You're nodding, right? Okay. Then, this, then don't stop them. This is an instruction for you. But if you do stop them and you don't believe in them, then, then, then that, that you can take that up with Allah on the, on, on, on the Day of Judgment. Look what Allah said after. ذَلِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ أَسْكَالَكُمْ وَأَطْحَرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that is pure for you. That is pure for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, that that is better for you. That is better for you and purer for you. Why? Look, if you, don't st if you stop them from getting married, trust me, you cannot stop them from seeing each other. Sadly, sadly, we live in a day and age where they're going to message each other on WhatsApp, Instagram, uh, there, there are new apps coming out every day that you don't know about. They're gonna find a way to get in touch. You're not, you can't cage them forever. Trust me. You can try, and you know, you, 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 you might do all sorts of oppressive things. Well, yeah, the billah. You might even physically abuse this girl. Trust me. You cannot prevent her from seeing this guy. She will end up doing it. And if you don't do it in a way that's halal, she is going to end up committing zina. She's gonna end up fornicating. She's gonna end up having a baby through an illegitimate means she's going to end up losing her virginity to another man subhanallah some of your daughters well i hate to say they may have already even lost their virginity and you don't even know alhamdulillah your daughter is actually coming to you and saying my father i want this halal wallahi dad she you, you know the courage she might have had to take to come to you or to ask her mom to come to you uncle wallahi it's, it's not easy she she respects you she 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 has she has honor for you that's why she didn't maybe come to you directly and it took a lot for her to come. And wallahi, she's saying, in this day and age, my father, I can do this in haram. I can have this man as a boyfriend and you, wallahi, you will never know. I can sleep with him. I can do all You will never know my father. But she came to you and said, Abu. She said, Abba. She said, Abi. She said, Dad. She said, I want this in halal. Wallahi, you should jump for joy. Wallahi, you should jump for joy. 
and should marry our, our teacher, uh, Sheikh Abd al-Rahman Hassan al He told us a story of a family he was dealing with. There was a sister, she brought home a, 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 a Reva brother, who was a very practicing brother, upon the Sunnah. She told her parents, I want to marry. Forget the dad, the dad didn't even stop, the mother was stopping it. Saying no, never, 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 never. They gave that brother miskin, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor him for his patience. I mean, they gave him such a hard time that after six months he gave up and he said, You know what, forget about it. You know, this, it's, it's, it's not worth trying to fight for his sister and go through this much, you know, kind of stress and abuse. So he, he went his own way. The sister didn't end up getting married, the mother got it her way. What happened a while after? She came home pregnant. With a kafir's baby. With a kafir's baby. And then our Sheikh he mentioned, he said to the woman, he said, he said, Wallahi, on the day of judgment, Allah's gonna question you about this. He said this to the mom. Of course the girl's gonna be held accountable for what she did. Zina, yeah, it's her fault. She's gonna be held accountable, hundred percent. But the mom, wallahi, he said, Wallahi, Allah's gonna question you about this on the day of judgment. Pay attention, that child, not only is it a child of a kafir. She slept with a kafir, but she brought you a man who was a Muslim. But now she slept with a kafir. But that child, that f even if that guy becomes Muslim and he, and he marries her off, that child is still not his. Biologically, he's his dad, but shar'an, he's not the dad. He can never take the name. If it's a girl, she has to wear hijab in front of him. Cannot inherit from him. It's not considered dad. And you can watch my other videos on this topic for more information on that. So this is purer. Wallahi, you're protecting her from zina. You're protecting him from zina. You're, you're creating an environment for them to be... To, to, be, to be pure before Allah Azza wa Jal. And then in your mind you might be saying No, I don't know if it's the right time I don't know if this, I don't know if that You know, I don't know if she's at the right age It might, it might create more problems da, da, da. Maybe she should wait, maybe she should get her degree Look what, how Allah ended the ayah Wallahu ya'lamu Allah knows Wa antum la ta'lamu And you don't know You don't know Allah knows this is better Allah said ذَلِكُمْ أَسْكَى لَكُمْ أَطْحَبُ This is better for you and purer for you but you're like, Allah said, Wallahu ya'lamu, Allah knows. Wa antum la ta'lamun, and you do not know. You do not have knowledge of this. You do not know what's better than Allah. Allah knows what's better. So, forgive me, I didn't mean to step out of line. You're my elder, you're my uncle, you're my aunties. I love you and respect you, even though I haven't met you. I make dua for you, even though I haven't met you. But I hope you will not take what I said as a disrespect or as an attack on your authority and your leadership in your household, but merely as an advice. Please marry them off, inshallah ta'ala, especially if they come with religion. Especially if they come with religion. Especially, sorry, you know, coming back to the previous, Allah said, ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَكُمْ أَطْحَرْ It's purer for you, it's better for you and purer for you. Especially if she's already telling you I'm in a relationship. She's already, she's already got the boyfriend. She's already in haram with him. So now, of course, she's already in, you have to purify it now. So I hope that that benefits, inshallah ta'ala. I have an entire marriage series. I would advise the fathers and the mothers and the kids who are wanting to get married to all watch this series on marriage. On what to, no, the first part is on what to look for in a spouse and how to go about everything in a correct way. And the second one is all about the marriage proceedings, the issue of the wali. There's a lot of information. The first course is called Finding Bay. The second one is called My Big Fat Muslim Wedding. Both of them can be found in the bonus course section of the Knowledge College. The Knowledge College is an online Islamic studies institute that we have and you can access it from the link below, inshallah ta'ala. So I really urge you from the bottom of the core of my heart to go to the link below, sign up to that. Go through the Knowledge College anyway, but in the bonus course section, especially watch those two courses on the issue of marriage. Um, Subhanakallah uh, And of course you guys can email me Inshallah ta'ala I would actually love for the uncles And the aunties themselves to email me Perhaps you feel like you might have a valid basis To prevent the daughter or whatever Email me Inshallah ta'ala I'll do my best to get back in touch with you Aunties and uncles don't email much Maybe I can help you Maybe I can be on your side Remember sometimes I may be able to relate to your child more than you can So I can be of a support perhaps inshallah ta'ala So email me at nasiyasession at gmail.com Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa and astaghfiruka wa atubu ilik Hey guys, I really hope that you benefited from that video Before you go, I want to ask you a really important question Have you guys ever thought about studying Islam and seeking knowledge? If not, then I want you to reflect upon this hadith of the Prophet Wasallam. The Prophet said that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every single Muslim. Of course, that doesn't mean you have to be a scholar, but you have to know the basics 
in order for you to be the best possible slave and worshipper of Allah that you can possibly be. So we decided to provide a solution for this. You see, many people want to study, but they don't have the means or the resources to do so. So we set up an online institute called the Knowledge College where you can study Islam from the comfort of your own home. So if you want more information on the Knowledge College and you'd like to sign up, go to the link below, check out the website, and hopefully we we'll see you on the other side. Assalamu alaikum.